upcoming sci-fi and how is how is this going to kind of define the future because we've seen we we we, we've seen what has defined sci-fi in the past right Um, obviously star wars and star trek uh defined Mm -hmm. what sci-fi was from you know the late 70s early 80s all the way i would say to the 2000s yeah um then matrix came out and And defined it Dude, the mat- yeah, the Matrix kind of redefined it of of what we could do with animation and slow motion and um, you know interesting kind of high concept ideas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then and then I want to say for the next uh, the next ten years, fifteen years, um, everything was kind of Matrixy, right? I, right. I have to throw a little bone in here though. You know, you have defining sci-fi in the next generation but you put dune up here where dune yes they are making new movies and i would say the movies are setting this preface it for new sci-fi stuff hmm. or fantasy but dune is an old book so i wouldn't say dune so you can't you can't include dune in upcoming i i fantasy. absolutely can um because the but dune has been dune, around forever dune dune the book defined what sci-fi looked like for star wars Mm -hmm. um and for other books of its nature it also came out the original movie came out around star wars and was a genre defining look Mm -hmm. and then the the dune that has come out recently and the dune that will come out recent uh, uh in the future are new visual takes on what sci-fi can look like Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, they're, they're in, they are helping to redefine how sci-fi looks, not necessarily the story. We know the story, but the way sci-fi is filmed, the way yep. that it can impact people visually, uh, with, with, uh, large scale or even small scale. Cause the small scale stuff in this movie is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, and we're seeing this a lot. We saw from the creator trailers, from the Dune trailers, from Rebel Moon, um, sci-fi these days is is they're trying to make it as large scale as possible mm-hmm. uh, for that for that epic kind of kind of kind of almost hearkening back to some of the Star Wars stuff of you know when when we see the Death Star come right. out from behind a planet, it's like we want this stuff that is so big and epic uh Mm -hmm. so um i i so to kind of dive into this i just i made a comment on the beginning where you were introducing this i was like spoiler alert it's all ai Mm -hmm. it does feel very ai heavy right now with going to be yeah things like chat gbt i think that's pushing a ai narrative Mm-hmm. Like I think at one point we had a time travel travel narrative, and there was I guess like this early two thousands maybe two thousand ten, uh, time where we had some time travel stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, twenty ten. I were think big there's a travel. lot of AI that's going to be coming up at least in the next. I think three years. I'm going to give it three to five years. We're going to see a lot. I would say like 70% is going to be AI. Right. Well, you know, I would say all three of these stories from what we're seeing are, are they, they don't get into it in the first Dune movie. I'm hoping maybe they mention it a little bit in the second. Um, AI is a big thing in Dune. Mm-hmm. Um, for for why the world is the way it is, why there are Mentats and Benny Gesserit and things like that, is because they had they had a big war with AI with thinking mm-hmm. machines. Um, that's why a lot of their ships are less computer, more analog, mm-hmm. um, and you know stuff like that. And we're seeing from Rebel Moon and from the Creator, there's some pretty heavy like robotics. Yeah, um, stuff, especially the creator, right? 
I found this article. Uh, Gareth Edwards is kind of talking about how he got inspired for the creator uh, promoting for promoting Rogue One. Let me share this. So uh, his approach, uh, basically, so new approach to sci-fi movies. Um, I think it, I, when it comes down to it, I think it's just a lot of fresh ideas. So like this paragraph basically summarizes he was going to his girlfriend's families. Um, I think it was out in Iowa. And mm-hmm. he basically just saw this field, this grassy field with uh, with this strange building in front of it and in the middle of it. And then he imagined robots out there working the fields, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think um, – and, and – I think you're you're right. I think there's 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 elements to the this new look. So you know what you're saying earlier about how there's a there's a specific way that it has looked, and now there's like the new approach to it. I think there's I think it just <clears throat> it's it's these new creative thoughts and these these inspiring these inspired directors and creators. So if you look at I what would- you've what you've pulled up here, Creator Dune and Rebel Moon, we're talking about Gareth Edwards, Denis Villeneuve, and Zack Schneider. Mm-hmm. All three of these guys <clears throat> have a very unique approach to sci-fi and get inspiration in different ways. Rebel Moon was meant to be a, a Star Wars story, but they weren't going to hire him for that. And so if Rebel, if he can't make a Star Wars story, then he creates this new look for this world and uh yeah does it in a very snyder uh style and there you know i would say that oh sorry go ahead josh well i was just gonna kind of cut in and say there's a lot of sci-fi fantasy out there that has missed the you know the the limelight of that could have been good but just quite didn't it didn't tickle mm-hmm. everybody's fancy or it didn't quite make it. So I feel like there is a lot that that we have missed. And I know we talk about this quite often. And I, I've i mentioned a couple things where I was like, I like the concept, but it didn't quite work. So that kind of plays into how what's going to be popular in this, this coming forward. How, yeah. How do we execute? the Mm -hmm. concept correctly um i 100 percent am on board with that idea is you're because you're right i've seen tons of things where i just i love the concept i think it's it's so good it's so fun yeah Jupiter's ascending was something that like i watched and i was like i want this to be good but it it's just it's a good concept but it 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 just doesn't quite work do you remember that movie, Joseph? Yeah. I know we watched it at least once. Uh, it's you been a it? while. It's been yeah. a long time. But what, what's what's the what's the main idea for Jupiter Ascending? Just to so remind me. there's like the high the royal family are they is that with Channing Tatum? Yes, Channing okay. Tatum and Mila Kumis. Mila Kumis. Yes, they are Kunis. harvesting Kunis. planets to basically make themselves live for forever because when they harvest the planet they can use humans to basically let let them live longer and so Mm -hmm. they are trying to harvest earth to create um long lasting juice i guess (laughs) to say long lasting juice yeah and (laughs) uh yeah it 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 just didn't quite work right and yeah, it was so for a while it was the movies were kind of doing this. They were trying to do um kind of a, a dune like things and it just the the twenty tens, early twenty tens to mid twenty tens, I would say, was not doing super great for those those types. There's a couple that land okay. I think um and this may have been before twenty tens, uh Looper. I think was executed very well. Looper was yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's that's that is in this genre, but it also feels very different with its mm-hmm. how they per, how they did that film. It felt very different than yeah. Like, uh, and man, but was going back kind of to what you said about um, you know the robots in the field and the the large sort of look that harkens back to um, lots of old sci fi art where. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and there's there's lots of old sci-fi art where it's a large scale something or another yeah. and there's robots and they're doing human tasks uh you know harvesting wheat or um playing baseball or something stuff like that right. it's like it's this interesting kind of fun motif that um people were playing around with way back i'm talking like you know uh uh you know back in like the 50s and 60s and you can see it from like ralph Macquarie, uh his his art for star wars go uh -huh. look at you know some of the ralph Macquarie art and you will you'll see that kind of epic scale um epic scale and small scale sci-fi robot feel right. um the guy who the guy right who the guy who wrote John Mark showed us a, a trailer for it. Uh, oh, what was it called? The robot thing. I forget what it's called, but it oh, was. Oh, is it Wyatt? Yeah, yeah. That's that's that kind of old Ralph McQuarrie um, art style. Okay. Yeah, like some of this kind of feels. I mean, this is Game of Thrones. Um, go up. Uh, wh why is his name so weird? Ralph, it's oh, it's M. Uh, it's it's like Mac Quarry, M A C, and then I not think it's this? Q U A R R. Is that not correct? No, 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 that's not it. M A C, M A C Q U R R something. Why? Use it out. Yeah, that that should be closer to it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so yeah, so this is this is cool. Yeah, like his his at. images okay. like Cloud City and um uh you know the spaceships and the robots That's and cool. everything. It was just it, you know, I it's part of what made Star Wars look so iconic. Is right. the, they, this is a little history that I don't know, don't want to go from your topic, but is he the one who made like the you know the posters for Star Wars are very like animated, you know? Yeah, I think drawn. So. Is he the one who did that? I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I, um, I, I never knew that. I, I was just curious. This is, but again, this is what defined like that one, especially is super iconic. This is what defined the look for Star Wars, and therefore defined the look for sci-fi, mm -hmm. and yeah. and what could be possible was making these pictures that people had had seen for a long time. This high concept stuff had been around for a long time. Right. Um, and and then Star Wars made it a reality. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm almost I almost hope that the new trend is to uh visually make this this stuff, this large scale stuff look uh, make like you could take a snapshot of it and make those mm -hmm. old pictures from it. Yeah. I think, I think we're going to see that. I mean, I, in some ways he doesn't do this across the board, like, like always, but I think Zack Schneider has part of that in his mind. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I was getting some serious 300 vibes from the rebel Moon yeah. trailer. It almost it more than iconic. anything he's done since. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and I, I heard, a I heard, couple people watching the trailer and they were like oh this just looks bad the animation looks bad it's like it does look not real but mm -hmm. it looks like zach schneider you know it looks like yeah. that 300 vibe where it it's like the colors are just wonky i mean literally the 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 king of persia i think it was in prince 300 persia. Mm -hmm. no not the prince of persia the oh like the, the oh oh uh, uh yeah xerxes yeah Zer uh he in 300 that's like a, a real actor but in some mm -hmm. ways when you look at it the way the the animation style was the environment that they placed him in it's all unnatural and so it almost makes him feel like he's an animated person it's like well, he it's looks like yeah he looks like a, a god almost yeah yeah and he was a lot larger and and so there's a specific style that he has that in some ways maybe visually a lot of people it doesn't it doesn't or on, on video, it doesn't resonate with a lot of people. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel probably like the creator does. That's organic and real like that, uh, Greg Frazier style, mm -hmm. but, 
but in a lot of ways, Rebel Moon has its own take on it. It has its own unique it, look that you're saying we went, the screenshot is a piece of art, you know? Even if we went back to Rogue One, that's what I wanted all of the Star Wars movies to, to look like. Mm -hmm. Not to be, like, necessarily, but to look like. That's what I wanted from every Star Wars. Everything was, you know, it took... You know, the, the the prequels tried to do some of that large scale stuff and it yeah. didn't quite work. Uh, mm -hmm. but it was it was like Rogue One perfected that sort of big uh just big space sci fi look. And I wanted all of like the the Star Wars movies coming out around that time to look, look like that. Rogue One has forever imprinted on me this one specific shot where the the dude who plays the antagonist in Rogue One, I can't remember his name. Mm -hmm. He's the guy with the lisp, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, we know. The Death Star is up in space, and he's on the edge of this high tower or whatever. And the the Death Star, like, comes over the horizon, almost looks like he's it's looking straight at him. Yeah. Before it's about to shoot the laser and blow up the whole the whole planet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's almost like it's almost it, it's some there was something so eerie about that where the Death Star off in space in the horizon, past the atmosphere, is it's like it looks like a moon that's looking at him and it's it's like his fate is right in front of him. And mm -hmm. they shot it, J Greg Frazier did an over the shoulder shot with it. So it made it look like two characters are facing off, but one of the characters is the Death Star. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll never forget that shot. That it, that really stuck with me because um, I hadn't seen that before. It was really cool. Yeah, Rogue One, It the look of it's wonderful. The the vibe and the look of the, the universe is, is unlike anything we've seen in Star Wars. So yeah. I, I agree. And I think the creator is going to feel that way. And Denis Villeneuve has his own unique look to things. Oh, yeah. the Dune universe to life. The, the Dune, the Dune feels very big and very, you know, stylized, unique, yes. unique from planet to planet, unique from mm -hmm. family to family, you know, it's going to be fun, but dang it. I really wish we didn't have to wait till March to see Dune. Yeah. This, yeah, this day is wrong. <laughs> At least we probably should be getting the creator uh, soon. Would you say we have a new Dune date? Yeah, we yeah. have um, just March, March March 17th. 15th. Oh, 15th. I thought it was 17th. Did I, did I said that earlier, remember? I said Dune date. Dune date? Dune date. I didn't uh, say due date. I said Dune date. It's a, it's a pun. It's a play on words. I guess. I you. thought it was funny. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on.